Welcome to video one for week six. The topic for this week is linear transformations, and in fact a major topic throughout all of linear algebra. What we're talking about here are functions, and you may be familiar from functions from high school and from calculus where we had functions from the real numbers to the real numbers, or subsets thereof. However, if I have a function from a to b, in the basic definition of a function, a and b can be any kind of sets. So they certainly could be sets of vectors, so they could be subsets of R2 or R3 or R4. We can have functions that act on vectors, and those are the type of functions we want to con consider. General multivariable functions, functions that act on vectors, are pretty complicated, and advanced calculus, multivariable calculus, goes into their properties. We're going to restrict ourselves to just linear functions of vectors, since this is linear algebra, and those are functions that satisfy these two properties. So that if I have an addition of two vectors, and then I apply the function, it's the same as applying the function to two vectors and then adding them. Likewise, if I have a scalar multiple of a vector, and then I apply the function, it's the same as doing the function first and then applying the scalar multiple. And these are the two fundamental algebraic descriptions of linearity. So what we're doing here is we're really preserving the algebra. Linearity, linear spaces, Euclidean spaces, they're defined by the fact that we can add things, we can do scalar multiples. That's the, the whole idea of vectors we've built up from the start of the course. Vectors are things that have addition and scalar multiplication. Linear functions are functions that work well with that structure. They preserve the addition, that's what we call this. We say they preserve the addition and they preserve the scalar multiplication. That's the algebra. What does that mean geometrically? Well, it means they're actually going to preserve linear subspaces because linear subspaces are built with these two operations. A linear subspace is a subspace where if I take any two things in the subspace and add them together, they're still in the subspace. And if I scale them by a scalar, they're also still in the subspace. Well, what this algebra then is going to say is that a linear subspace gets sent to another linear subspace. And linear subspaces are flat things. So these linear functions are going to preserve flat things. That if I act on a plane, I'm going to get something that's still flat, a plane, a line. It might be smaller dimension, but it's still going to be flat. This flatness is sort of a, a major theme of this whole course. Things that are described by linear structures are lines, are planes, are three spaces, are flat kind of things. Also because of the scalar, if a is equal to zero, this tells me that f of zero is zero. The zero matrix, the zero vector goes to the zero vector. So these functions also preserve the origin. This is why they say they preserve linear subspaces because linear subspaces include the origin. There's also a, a class of other transformations called affine tra transformations. Um, they also preserve flat things, but they can in fact move the origin. So we talk about affine subspaces as subspaces that are flat, are lines and planes and the like but don't necessarily go through the origin. We're not going to spend a lot of time talking about affine transformations. I thought I would mention them, but we're going to focus most of our energy on linear transformations. We can compose these things. One of the most important things we can do with functions is composition. So let me think of linear transformations. We've got one linear transformation, f, that goes from dimension n to dimension m another transformation g that goes from dimension m to dimension l. We can compose these if these two dimensions match up. And we do it in this order. We do f first, it goes from rn to rm. And then we do g, because g starts in rm and then goes to rl. So when we're doing composition, we have to worry about the dimensions adding up. Other than that, Composition works exactly like it did before. We do one thing, we do another thing, inside and outside functions, all of the rules we had before for composition. One last thing I want to say in this video is the theme of symmetry. So I've been using the word preserve. Preserves the algebra, preserves the origin, preserves flat things. These are all kinds of things that are preserved by these new transformations I've defined. The notion of symmetry in mathematics at least in university and advanced mathematics, is really about what is preserved by an operation or a transformation. The conventional notion of symmetry, sort of in, in the general public, is that symmetry preserves a shape. 
you got symmetries of, of an octagon or some other kind of shape. And that's certainly a thing that you can do in mathematics. You can have symmetries that preserve a shape. But we're going to use the term in this course and elsewhere in mathematics to preserve all sorts of things. So we say that linear transformations are a type of symmetry transformation because they preserve the origin, they preserve flat things, they preserve the algebraic rules. And that's the, the theme of symmetry I want to develop in this course, is that symmetry is the kind of preservation of some kind of structure. And it can be much, much more broad a kind of structure than just preserving a shape in the conventional notion of symmetry. And we'll return to this in later videos when we talk about other symmetries, other things that are preserved by particular classes of linear transformations.